now let's uh, look at this loss function a little more carefully so we will use concepts of probability to look at these uh, this loss function and uh, what we will start with is expected value of this loss function okay and what we want is we want to minimize the expected value of this loss function okay, so this is a stylized e uh, and if we think in terms of probability then basically it we can express this as and uh, we will have to integrate it over all uh, the probability distribution of x and the probability distribution of uh, of t so basically this is going to be l and then joint probability of x and t and then dx dt okay so what does this mean so let's first assume that x is a single dimensional variable so in a single dimensional variable what you will have is let's say you have an x and t plane right so you have this plane where you have x here and then you have t here so why would t have a distribution so uh, first of all when we are looking at different samples training samples right so let's say we are given several training samples these are xt pairs okay. so every point represents xi and ti pair okay. so from here we can see that there is a distribution of both x and t uh, but more precisely what we can think of it as uh, that uh, the values that we are given they are actually not very pure in the sense that there is some noise to it we we have some uh, we have some ideal underlying t underlying value that that should have come associated with x but we don't don't always get it so let's let's take an example so let's say we want to predict uh, let's say t is your power consumption right and x is temperature so we are looking at a city in which x is the temperature and there is a temperature range and based on that we want to predict what will be the uh, so that is let's say the mean temperature during the day and t is the mean uh, power consumption during during the entire day so we might want to do this to predict how much uh, power to generate in the power plants that are supplying to the city so we can think of it as that when we measure the power maybe all readings haven't come in so we had to estimate some of those readings so because of that the the target value that we get to make a, a predictive model for for this situation uh, doesn't have exact values of t maybe some of the values of t are actually estimated they are not they are not exactly correct so that could be one reason why the t values the target values themselves are noisy okay and your uh, uh, the input values th and themselves can also be noisy so because of this we will have a probability distribution underlying probability distribution over both x and t okay. uh, the other reason that th there could be a distribution is that uh, every time we get the uh, we have the same temperature for different days we may have different values of the target uh, that is possible because let's say for two days that had that same temperature one was a weekday the other was a weekend and we didn't model that in in x itself so for whatever reason we have a probabilistic uh, view of we want to start with the probabilistic view of both the input and the target so now let's try to look at this uh, expected value of this loss function further so what is this loss so we will simplify and drop the constants and we will simply call it y minus t okay uh, y minus t squared right so we had that divide by 2 and we will we will skip that and then we have p of xt dx dt now what we want to do is because we want to minimize this loss we will take its derivative with respect to y and set it to 0 now y is a function of x okay what is y why we write it as y is equal to fx so when we take the derivative of this expected loss with respect to y it's actually y of x so then what we will get is uh, we will get this two integration y minus t okay pxt 
and this is for a particular x so dx doesn't matter we will have dt and this will we want to set this equal to 0 okay that's how we'll find the minimum and this looks like a the loss is a convex function because it's a square uh, quadratic function so we can do this okay. so what this means is that your ideal y is going to be integration of uh, t pxt divided by p of x okay that comes from that integration uh, and dt okay and what is this quantity by base theorem we know that this quantity is uh, the conditional expect the con conditional distribution so what we will get is your y should be expected value of if you take the distribution of t of t given x so now this expression is quite important because it gives us some insights to us the insight that it gives us is that the minimized loss we can minimize the loss only if we uh, if we have the estimator y which actually gives you whatever is the estimated value of t given x even if t is distributed so let's pick one value of x and in this value of x if we take a slice right so on this slice there could be a distribution let me take a different color yeah so on this on this slice there is a distribution of t okay so for example the middle value here is most likely and then the value drops off when i go either above or below that so there is a distribution of t that is around it right uh, and that could that is basically the measurement error that we were talking about now even be that as it may even if there is a distribution of t if we take the the mean value or the expected value of t given x right that is the best possible estimate for for the estimator to hit why should come as close to uh, the this expected value of t given x as possible but this uh, uh, estimator y will never come close exactly to the same value as uh, expected value of t because there may be some constraints it may not be a function that has infinite capacity we will talk about capacity at some some other point later in the course but let to put it uh, simply let's say if we have a function right so uh, we have x and we have t and we have different samples of x and t right uh, if we have a functional form for y and that functional form is such that it can only model certain types of functions so for example it can only model a function like this no matter how hard we try to uh, fit y to t right so this is your y x y as a function of x or fx right so it can only come so much closer to t uh, so there will always be a gap between y and t right so uh, what we want to do is we want to analyze that gap we want to analyze the way the the expected value of the square of that error and see if we can decompose it further into terms that we can understand in terms of the modeling capacity and how much closer we can come to t and later on we'll also look at the noise in t so this uh, y minus t whole square we can write it as uh, y minus expected value of t given x plus expected value of t given x right so we just added and subtracted the same term okay minus t and we can take the whole square of this so we wanted to uh, minimize that right so your expected loss will have two terms uh, will have three terms when we when we uh, expand this square we will get three terms and uh, those three terms one of those will be uh, e, uh, y minus expected value of 
p given x whole square okay the other term will be uh, this expected value of t given x minus t whole square okay and then we will have the cross term which will be this uh, minus of uh, or sorry plus of 2 uh, y minus expected value of t given x times expected value of t given x minus t and then we will have this entire thing and then we will have p of xt dx dt right? so what we can see is that this cross term is going to evaluate to zero so what we will have is we will have two terms okay one will be this y uh, minus uh, the expected value of t given x and then we will have another term which is expected value of t given x minus t so now all these are slightly different from each other okay so one contribution that we will get is from this term which is y minus expected value of t given x whole square okay and we will take its expectation with respect to the data that is given to us okay uh because we can only what is data data is basically the pairs of t and x that are dealt to us we are not talking about now a distribution over t we are talking about the actual values of t and x that are given to us so that will be one term the other term that we will get is this expected value of t given x minus t and the expectation of this whole square so we will get two terms like this now uh, the the first term is basically your modeling variance right so here it depends on how complicated of a model that we use and that complicated model will bring y close to as close to t expected value of t as possible and the second one will be that there, there is an inherent noise in the model itself and that inherent uh, noise in the model is because uh the training uh target that we are given to us which is ti which is part of d that training target itself is not uh perfect right it is uh it can come close to the expected value but it can it may be noisy so there may be some noise that is associated in these measurements and that will be in the second term now the first term itself we can divide it further okay so uh here what we have is actually we go to the next slide so we also have an expected value of y okay why is that because every time we change the data sample we might have a slightly different model so let me put it again let me draw the picture again so let's say we have this x and we have the target value t okay so now uh we think that there is some uh, there is some error in the uh, there is some error in the measurement in t itself so because of that let's say there is some underlying uh, ideal t for every x so because of that we will have some uh, fuzziness around that t so that is number one one cause of uh, variance in the in the model uh, the other issue that we can have is that now from this underlying model we actually will sample some t because we cannot look at every every possible t and x pair so we will sample some of them so we might get a sample here a sample here a sample here a sample here and a sample here and so forth okay so now this sample can change in another sampling so let's say if we were to do another set of measurements we might get another set of samples so between these two types of samples uh, every time we estimate uh, a function for y that function is going to be different and that function is going to be dependent on the data itself okay so that uh, so we will basically sample it from the data itself so uh, basically what we are saying is that your y is going to be 
dependent on x and the data which means however the target values are sampled from it okay minus if we look at its expected values this is uh, expected value of t given x this is what we want to minimize right so we want to minimize this okay so here we will make a we will try to simplify the notation a bit we will call expected value of t given x uh, we will just call it h of x h of x uh, the reason we use h is because uh, it stands for hypothesis so uh, essentially what we will get is that we will add and subtract a term okay so that term will be the expected value from given the data the expected value of y as a function of x and d so this is different from the actual y so the actual y is some ideal y right that we want to hit and this the second one which is the expected value given the data is the one that we will get based on some sample and the sample could be for example the red samples that you see here or the blue samples that you see here so because of that this term now we can add and subtract uh this term in the middle and what we will get is y of xd minus expected value given the data of y as a function of x and the data this will be squared and then we will have another term which will be this expected value given d of y as a function of x and d okay. and here we will minus we will subtract h of x whole squared plus we will have two times the cross term so the cross term will be uh, this term times this terms without the squares so those will be here so when we integrate that the cross term will vanish and we will have basically these two terms that are left uh, the the two square terms that that are left to us okay. so essentially finally what we will get is we will get three terms your expected value of loss will have three terms okay. uh, one term will be the bias term or bias squared term i'll just call it bias the other term will be the variance term and the third term will be the noise term okay so these are three different terms the first term that you will get okay, is the expectation based on the data that we are given to us of y as a function of x and data okay minus the true under uh, the uh, the expected value of uh, t given x okay square of this okay. and this will be integrated over px dx okay. so this is the first term and that is the bias term and the second term that we will get is this integration of expected value again given the data of y as a function of x and d okay, minus the the expectation of the same thing y as a function of x comma d okay squared and this will again be px dx and sorry here it will be plus and then the third term will be the noise term which is the double integral of hx minus t whole squared pxt dx dt okay so the derivation uh, apart 
it's important to understand the importance of the three terms because they give us very important messages. The last term, let's start with the last term. The last term says that T is not exact. Okay, T is whatever is given to us, but there is actually an expected value of T underlying it, which means that there is uh, there is some noise in the measurement. Every time we try to measure something, we may not get the exact same value of T, even if the value of X is fixed. So because of that, there is some variance even for a given value of X. So let's draw it out. This is X and now this can be Y or T. Both are on the same axis. Okay. So uh, even though we are given these points, for any given value of X, there is actually a distribution around it, a distribution of T around it. So that distribution itself, okay, that distribution itself has a variance and that basically defines the noise in the target values. We cannot do anything about it. That is just how we are, what, what we are dealt with. Now let's look at the first term. The first term is also easy to understand. Uh, there is some true underlying value, right, which is uh, h of x, which is the expected value of t given x. Now, the closer we can come to that, the lower our bias will be. Right? So that is the lower lower our error of estimation will be. But that error of estimation will not be, uh, that error of estimation will be measured only with respect to the data, the data that is given to us. But now we have the second term. That second term basically tells us that uh, the Y itself can vary depending on which data we are dealt with. So anytime we have a different model, right? So let's say these blue points were the ones that were given to us. And because of that, we get a model for Y, which is, let's say, which looks like this. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if we were to resample the data and we were given a different set of samples, our model could be slightly different. So we could get this red line. Now, uh, for different subsamples of the data of, let's say if you could get infinite data, we could have many, many subsamples and we could have many, many different uh, estimates for this function y. So all these estimates for this function y, they will vary slightly, right? If we don't have infinite samples, if we have a finite number of samples uh, in D, we, they will vary slightly. So because of that variance, because of that varying of the function itself, because of different samples, you can expect that your the uh, the y that you will learn for any given x and the data will not be the same every time because every time your data is different and because of that we expect that there will be some variance in the model now because of that now because all these three terms are positive what we will get is that if we increase the complexity of the model Right? So a complex model can decrease the bias. Okay. So it will keep decreasing the bias because it can fit more and more exactly to the underlying data, to the given data, and your bias will keep decreasing. However, so this is your bias. However, your variance will increase. Your variance will increase. And because of that, if we add the two, If we add the two, let me use a different color. If we add the two, we will get some sort of a minimum. Okay. And that minimum is the ideal complexity for the model. The third term we cannot do anything about. So your total uh, expected loss will still have some non-zero value. And that is because of the noise term. And that we, we really cannot do anything about, but we can definitely minimize the sum of the bias and the variance okay uh, so what does that mean so what is this variance so you can look at the let's say that you get a different value for y for the green curve and a different value for y for the red curve so every time you resample how much can you expect the model to vary 
if you can expect the model to vary a lot right that means it has a high variance model and usually more complex models have high variance we can see this by thinking about what will happen if we use let's say uh, different degrees of polynomials to fit a set of points right so if we have a set of points let me use two different colors here if I have a set of points like this and another set of points from the same underlying distribution uh, there's some problem with my pen the colors are not very stable for some reason let's take another slide Uh, let me draw and show the interplay between bias and variance to give an intuitive idea. So let's say we are going to draw a graph where we have x on the x-axis and y or t on the y-axis. Okay. And we could have two different samples. Okay. So let's take a a sampling that looks like like this okay. and let's take another sample that looks like this okay. so these two sets of points are drawn from the same distribution and that distribution is p of x comma t okay. just that we get two different samples because we have drawn from the same distribution twice. Now let's talk about what happens if I use a simple model versus a more complex model. So let's take a simple model where we will use an equation of a line and your yx is mx plus c but what we will write it as w1x plus w0. Okay? So this is the equation of a line. The second model that we will use is slightly more complex which is wx is equal to w2x square sorry y x is equal to w 2 x square plus w 1 x okay plus w 0 okay. so here it's a slightly more complex model okay and they will have very different uh, behavior they will have different behavior now let's assume first we are fitting the red point with the first equation okay in that case we will get perhaps a line like this and when we uh, fit the blue points we will get another line we might get a line like this Oops. okay so these are two different lines now uh, each of the lines by themselves if the underlying set of x and t pairs are not on a straight line themselves then each of the lines will not perfectly fit the data so this model will have high variance in both cases in both samplings high bias sorry high bias however under repeated resampling it's possible that we will uh, the 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 uh, slope of the line and the intercept of the line will not vary that much so we will have low variance for a simple model On the other hand, if I use the second model, which is the parabola model, then what I can do is let me get rid of this line. Uh, then I might be able to come very close to the blue points. And it's possible that for the red points, I'll be able to come very close to the red points, okay, much closer to the red points. So in that case, what I will have is uh, low, low bias. Okay, but high variance. So this is for a complex model. And this will become more and more uh, obvious when uh, your models are have even more, more number of freedom. What is the number of freedom? What the degree of freedom? Uh, what is degree of freedom? You can think of it as the number of parameters that have to be estimated that's a rough way of calling uh, degree of freedom or a capacity of a model 
so if your model has very high capacity then it will obviously come closer to the training data points that are given to us but if we were to resample the training points we will get a large variation so if we have a complicated uh, if we have a complicated uh, uh, polynomial right very high degree polynomial then under under resampling it will vary quite a bit okay it can vary quite a bit and the variance can be very large okay so now let's pause for a minute and think about what message we are getting from this the message that we are getting is that it's important to estimate the variance of a model not just the bias not don't always keep reducing the bias of the model so question is how can we estimate the variance of a model that variance itself is based on this theoretical idea that there is an underlying distribution of x and t and then that underlying distribution is repeatedly sampled uh, whereas we may not have that luxury to uh, completely understand what is the probability distribution of x and t together right yet what we are given if we have sufficient samples we can create sub samples we can create repeated some samples including those with replacement so that we can uh, have multiple estimates of the model for the same underlying equation so if the equation under structure of the equation so whether it is a linear equation or a quadratic equation we can repeatedly estimate it on uh, a bootstrapped a number of samples from the same data so if i am given several x and t pairs right so i have x1 t1 all the way up to x x n t n all right so i can repeatedly let's say sample a subset of it let's say a subset m which is less than n and on that i can repeatedly estimate the model y of x and see what is the variance for in uh, what is the variance in y for different values of x okay how much does it change does it change very widely if it is changing very widely that means there is a issue with that and the easy way to do that is to actually look at just the validation loss so what we will do is we will look at the training loss which is basically an estimate of of just the bias and as the model becomes more and more complex the training loss will keep going down so this is loss this is on the training data and then we will also look at the loss on the validation data so loss on the validation data will probably keep going down and at some point it will start to rise okay so this point of minimum where the validation loss is the minimum is a proxy for the point where the sum of it's a it's an it's an estimate of the point where the sum of the bias and the variance is minimum that's why we get this dip in validation loss that's one way of doing it the other way would be that we take several bootstrap samples and see which model gives gives you the lowest error on average error or average loss on a bootstrap sample another way to do this would be to do k fold cross validation so you divide the data into k different folds you train on k minus 1 folds and test on the k plus uh, k kth fold and then you shuffle the folds and see which structure of the model gives you the lowest loss on an average on all the k folds and that structure of the model will give you the hyperparameters which is basically the structure of the model so once you get that you can then reestimate it on the entire data and then you can be somewhat confident that it will work on a test data so long as it is also sampled from the same underlying prob joint probability of x and t